uh, request uh, Mr. Eric Fault uh, to take the floor. He is the new director of UNESCO for India and uh, some of the neighboring countries. So we really look forward to hearing. Thank you, uh, Professor Dubey. Distinguished uh, members of uh, the panel and uh, Mr. Rai. May Bahed Prasan who ad shap sablogon ke beaches mahat vapurn avsarpur. I would like to uh, thank you uh, uh, and especially, of course, the uh, South Asia uh, Regional Forum on Safe and Secure Education for uh, inviting me uh, today. And uh, uh, of course, I will try to uh, contribute to the discussions on the uh, emerging challenges and uh, solutions for safe and secure education in South Asian countries. The uh, Honorable Minister has made a, a very inspiring intervention. I'm sure we will all uh, agree on this earlier on. Uh, and I'm very glad that he put so much emphasis uh, on the importance of uh, girl and women education. That's clearly uh, the key to the future of any country and certainly of the region. And the first point to sort of move on from what he's already said uh, that I want to make uh, today is that many of the ambitious uh, targets set by the global community through the Sustainable Development Goals to provide safe and supportive learning environments will simply not be achieved until, in particular, school-related violence is eliminated. And I think this is something that uh, others have already touched upon or uh, will touch upon. And I will also emphasize uh, today that we must find ways, in particular, to end violence against girls in our schools and that gender-based violence is a global scourge we must better tackle. Ladies and gentlemen, according to uh, UN data, every year 246 million girls and boys around the world are subject to some form of school-related violence. And this can take many forms. It can, inc it can include mistreatment, bullying, more and more unfortunately cyber bullying, psychological abuse and sexual harassment. And I'm sure that many of you in this room know about uh, examples of this violence and these different types of violence, perhaps even in your own families. And the unsafe learning environments that have been created as a result of this violence reduce the quality of education for all learners. Indeed, the affected learners, learners who are affected by this violence, may, for instance, avoid or participate less in class. Sometimes they may even drop out of school altogether. They are, in any case, at risk of uh, increased uh, anxiety, psychological stress and depression. Violence, which, as I said, can include bullying, can in fact occur anywhere in the school environment. It can in, it occur in the classrooms. It can occur on the playgrounds, in toilets, in changing rooms, on the way to or from schools, and of course, as I said, uh, online. We will actually, by the way, have on the, the 28th of June uh, at, at the UNESCO House an event uh, uh, that we uh, organized with some of our other partners on, on child safety online. And those of you who are interested are welcome to join. So this violence also, it must be pointed out, can be carried out by students, but yes, also by educational and non-educational <laughs> staff. And we have to recognize finally that uh, it will affect first and foremost the victims, but also bystanders and in a way, yes, the perpetrators themselves. Violence in schools can take many forms, and both girls and boys can be targets. We know that uh, typically the girls are more exposed to sexual violence, while boys are most often subject to corporal punishment and gang violence. But there is a widespread understanding, again, around the world, not just in the region, that we must redouble our efforts when it comes to gender-based violence. And 
break what is often akin to a conspiracy of silence in many countries around the world. Despite uh, the increasing attention given to safety and security in education, I uh, also would like to mention that the research concerning gender-based violence in schools in the Asia-Pacific region is very uneven, with, in fact, very few systematic and comprehensive studies to understand the magnitude of this scourge. UNESCO's uh, most recent uh, report on the subject, which itself is, uh, dates back uh, to 2014, uh, concludes that the evidence, as far as the region is concerned, is actually very scattered and difficult to compare across countries because it's not, as I said, comprehensive enough. Several countries in uh, Asia lack a comprehensive and uh, legislative framework that addresses violence in and around schools or at least a focused programmatic response. Rather, it appears that most countries uh, in the Asia Pacific undertake legislative strategies and frameworks that address each form of violence probably too much in isolation. For example, in many cases, corporal punishment is addressed, but not student-on-student student violence. Similarly, bullying may be addressed, but not bullying based on perceived sexual orientation or gender identity and expression. Sexual violence perpetrated by adults may be addressed, but not necessarily sexual violence by other students. And unless deeply entrenched cultures that tolerate and perpetuate forms of school violence are addressed, I would say, holistically, UNESCO believes that uh, policies and programs will be ineffective. Moreover, the lack of intersectoral collaboration and uh, coordination in efforts to address school violence, as well as disjointed national actions on policy and programming clearly need further <coughs> attention, again, all over the world, but specifically here in this case in the Asia-Pacific region too. The global community is, uh, is reacting, and uh, member states hold uh, stimulating debates, are trying to take action, especially in intergovernmental organizations such as uh, uh, ours, and uh, ensuring that all children and young people have access to safe, inclusive, and healthy learning environments has become a priority. It is certainly a strategic priority for us at UNESCO. In uh, a couple of years ago, UNESCO's executive board ad adopted a historic resolution called Learning Without Fear, which recognizes that violence against children, and I'm quoting from this resolution, have a devastating effect on the dignity of children and on the enjoyment of human rights and constitute a major obstacle to the equal enjoyment of the right to education for all, gender equality at all levels of education, and inclusive, transformational, and sustainable development. This resolution is the basis for action of all countries who have agreed that this was an important issue and call specifically on governments to design and implement national policies and actions. And again, there is a lot of action that is taking place. What I'm saying is simply that we need more. When it comes to uh, the global guidance to end gender-based violence in education, which uh, was another landmark report jointly published by UNESCO and UN Women in 2016, uh, it is also a key document that I want to mention here today because it provides key information to uh, governments, but also policymakers, uh, teachers, practitioners, and civil society organizations who wish to take concrete action against school-related gender-based violence. Uh, this is a document that offers uh, uh, approaches, methodolo methodologies, and tools uh, to uh, uh, prevent and respond uh, to such uh, violence. We have at uh, uh, UNESCO uh, a team who can uh, help you and guide you if you're interested in these documents. My colleague Satoko Yeno is here uh, with me today. She's our top specialist uh, in this field. And I want to finish by, uh, since we are uh, looking at uh, the, the situation in the region, but we're here in India, I really want to give solid credit to the government and uh, uh, to the Ministry of Human Resource Development, of course, uh, in particular, which uh, uh, have shown a high level of uh, uh, commitment to developing uh, a comprehensive, 
evidence-informed policy for ensuring uh, a safe and secure learning environment in schools. Everybody has a contribution to make, and uh, I'm always uh, especially happy to discuss this issue with civil society organization, because nobody, no one group has the answer to these issues. Uh, quite clearly, we all have to pitch in uh, intergovernmental organizations like ours, government authorities, civil society, school, and educationists. I know that uh, in India, a national core group was recently established to look into the issues related to, uh, in particular, girls' education, which also includes uh, school safety as an essential component. I know that uh, there have been a number of circulars sent from the, the Ministry and Central Board of Secondary uh, Education to the state education departments to promote the creation of safe, non-violent and inclusive learning environments for all boys and girls. So this is all part of this general uh, effort that we have to uh, put together, and it obviously goes in the right direction. For our part, we stand uh, modestly uh, ready to uh, advise and support uh, whenever uh, needed. Uh, these efforts are uh, long-term efforts. We look forward to engaging uh, with all of the ministries in, uh, in charge of uh, education and, of course, with civil society to ensure that no child or young person is denied the fundamental right to education. Daniel Weibler.